So day two. So what's happening to the head now? Going to try and extract some studs. It's not going that well. Um, basically, the exhaust manifold was slightly warped, as you saw, and it snapped a couple of studs off in the head. Uh, so the first thing today is to try and get those studs out and we don't have a MIG welder and we've been up to Chris at the garage and his MIG welder hasn't got any gas so we don't we have a stick welder we're trying to weld something on to those studs that are inside the head so that we can get them out so a bit of stress outside I'm lurking inside but I'm making the boys tea because that will make it all better So the studs are out, there's one of them, and the other one we need to um, find because it's gone into the port, so that's a bit of an issue. Okay, there we go, all we needed was a magnet. So what we're doing, just cleaning stuff? Yeah, basically. So the head has been cleaned up, just about ready to refit. Anyway, the gasket is on. I'm going to hook that on there. Okay. And Chris is going to put that in there. Oh, someone's going to put that in there. Alright, just don't let that strap come off. Yeah, yeah. Up you go. I mean, it came out like that, so theoretically it should go back, right? Yeah, it should do. Okay. You want to come in as much as you can. Yeah, a bit more, or? Yeah, in. Right, that's about as far as you've got to go, isn't it? Yep. Right. Let's go down and see what happens. That's why we need a bit of a tag on it. Yeah. It's <laughs> the studs, right. So I'm gonna pull those bolts up and put a cable tie around like you did before. Mm -hmm. Yes, is the answer is yes, but have you got a long cable tie? Excellent. Lower <clears throat> it down again and see what happens. That chain doesn't seem to be in line with the yellow thing at the minute. Doesn't need to be at the moment. Okay. Started it. Yeah. Yeah, we're there. Now the next question is <clears throat> that looks more lined up. Oh uh, yeah. Will that come off or not? It does come off. But... Does that help yeah, or not? Oh, it gives you a couple of millimetres. You go down and see what happens. That's moved. Oh, it's got that. Is that flush? No. no. Not in. There are the trials and tribulations of wiggling a TD5 head back into a discovery. Yeah, it's mm. so much easier on the Defender, I'd imagine. Okay, we're now putting the cylinder head bolts back in. 
and they have come from our lovely partners at Eurospare. Don't worry, there are actually 12, not 11. Thank you, Eurospare, once again for your help with all of our Land Rovering mechanical needs. And why are you putting WD-40 on them? Just helps the threads when they're going into the block and okay. um, bind up when you're talking them up. Some people use light oil, some people don't use anything. It's good practice just to lose, lubricate them slightly. So this is a very important piece of paper because it tells you not only the tightening sequence for the bolts, but the tightening sequence in terms of what you have to do to make sure that they're correctly torqued. So another thing we have learned today is when you're looking at this diagram for how what order to torque the bolts up in, this is the front with the gap and that's the back. So that's how it sits in relation to your head. And so for this first tightening, we've got to go to 30 newton meters. It shouldn't seem like it's a lot, but Right there then. That's this one. The front one. Mm, in theory. Number nine is this one. That's what it says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what and why do you go thirty and then sixty five and stuff? The specification is for the stretch bolt. Every head is every every stretch bolt has a different specification. So if you're doing a different engine, you will have a different set of torque settings to go for. Okay, but basically it's so that it pulls it down evenly. That is the idea. Okay. Now changing the setting on the torque wrench to 65 as prescribed for the next instruction. Stop when it beeps. Yeah. Not beeping yet. That'll be that one. Okay. Number nine. Especially for Luna, mechanic in with pretty nails. So you're basically just double checking that they're yeah, all. Yeah, right. I'm double checking it, but what you find is the ones in the middle, but you will get a bit more on them. So the next instruction is that you have to turn each bolt 90 degrees. I guess you you can't really set the talk thing for that though can you you can when you spend enough money <laughs> all right so you've got the fancy snap-on thing and it and it will measure and it nice... does angles yes it really does angles wow <laughs> yeah i'm in awe of yourself your tool <laughs> yeah no this does angles which is why it's worth purchasing but if you're only doing one head gasket it's not worth purchasing <laughs> and of course the other thing with it is it remembers how many how many degrees you've gone, so you can actually do a bit of a ratcheting ratchet, yeah. to get the. Wow, that's proper clever. Next instruction, 180 degrees. And then they're getting tighter. I won't be able to move it now, will I? No, I literally can hardly move that. Don't take it off the socket. Oh, I've done so far. 56. I think if I was a bit taller, it would be easier. Come on. Wow. Come on, girl, you can do this. Yes! <laughs> so basically, we're all having a workout today <laughs> doing these. That's a bit better, I haven't got quite so far to reach. So last one is now a 45 degree turn on each bolt. So it's only 45 degrees this time. Yeah. Okay, that's quite tight. This is the last one to 45 degrees. This is gonna be a tight one, I think. Okay, so we're replacing this fuel pipe. I don't know exactly what sort of fuel pipe it is, but it's a fuel pipe. It's a high pressure pipe that goes from the front of the head to the fuel regulator. 
Okay, and the old one was a bit knackered. I'll just show you that. It's gone hard. Yeah. And when they go yeah. hard and brittle, they um, they fracture. Well, this one's nice and flexible and has come from Eurospare. So there's things going back on to both sides of the engine now. That um, exhaust manifolds had a bit of a flat off on the belt sander and had the webs cut out. So that should be good. I need the socket because it's got a bit of a recessed into the head. Inlet manifold going back on, all nice and cleaned up and shiny. And how are we doing on the exhaust manifold? One more nut to get on. Couldn't have really made them any more difficult, could they? So we're changing an O ring. Top O ring and the bottom washer on the injectors. Okay, and we have those replacement parts right here from our partners at Eurospare, so that's good. <clears throat> if I can get it out. And those are bits that make seals, obviously, so. Yeah. Good practice to change them if you've taken the injectors out. Um, no, it's a necessity. You oh, can't, it's a necessity. Okay. You can't. You can't. They're a bit like head bolts. You can't reuse them. Never wire brush the tip. Okay. It won't work afterwards. Just a little screwdriver or a little pick just to scrape the worst of the carbon off at, at the base just to get so that the washer sits properly but don't do the tip bit of lubrication on the o-ring Go. So why have you put this injector in before that one? Because I need to rotate the engine because the lobe of the camshaft is in the way to get this injector in. Uh -huh. So because I'm like doing less work than I need to, I've put as many in as I possibly can before I have to rotate the engine rather than rotate the engine every time I want to put an injector in. Okay, that sounds very wise to me. So we're putting some of the oil from our partners at Exol. It's 5W40 fully synthetic engine oil into the top of Lulu's engine before the rocker cover goes on, just because it's easier. Is that it? Yep. So it's now time to put the rocker cover back on, which means we need a rocker cover gasket. And luckily we have one from Eurospare. So why do you put it on the top and not on the head? Because there's nothing on the head to actually keep it in place.
Huge thanks to Jonathan for coming to help us do that and for all his continued support. And thank you for joining us once again. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and we'll see you again next week.